As the Taliban takes over Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, images of Afghans rushing to withdraw money at closed banks are surfacing over the internet. Bitcoiners are wondering out loud if Bitcoin could help. And joining us now to discuss is Jalak Jobin, Jobin Putra, founder of Future Perfect VC. Welcome to the show, Jalak. So I want to I don't want to get lost in complacency that Bitcoin can fix everything, but do you think if Bitcoin was widely adopted in a country like Afghanistan, the people could have benefited from it and the inaccessibility of money could have been prevented amid war and chaos? Well, the point of uh, Bitcoin is really uh, to, to be self-sovereign money uh, that can cross over borders, that is not dependent on any one government's um, kind of whims or, or their uh, geopolitical uh, 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 views. And, and so, you know, I think without a doubt, Bitcoin uh, can play a role. Um, and and we, we've had uh, examples of, of Afghani girls uh, and women uh, being airdropped or or given Bitcoin, um, you know, through several nonprofits over the years previously, uh, where they would each have their own wallet uh, that only they could access, uh, and they would receive micro payments and in, in return for writing blog posts or, you know, reporting on on the ground situation there. So we've already seen it work. I mean, what happens and what's challenging at a time like this is is, is this mad rush for the banks. The banks are shut down. We've seen it play out in places like. Argentina and India, all, you know, countries all over the world, and it's almost too late at this point. Um, uh, but uh, if, if we were able to get everyone to have a wallet uh, that they can access and airdrop and donate Bitcoin to them, at least they have some savings that could be transportable across borders. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned women and girls because now the Taliban is telling Sky News that they will guarantee women's rights under the limits of Islam. Now, Malala Yousafzai, I might be not pronouncing her name, Yousafzai, I don't know, okay, was shot in the head by the Taliban nearly a decade ago for publicly advocating for education uh, for women and girls. She penned a New York Times essay that was just released today, uh, the titled, I Fear for My Afghan Sisters. And in it, she writes that in the last two decades, millions of Afghan women and girls received an education. Now the future they were promised is dangerously close to slipping away. So deeply alarming what these women with what few glimmers of progress for girls have been made over the years may be crushed because of this takeover. And I'm reminded of uh, Parisa Ahmadi, a high schooler who wrote a, uh, was a blogger for the New York Film Annex. She's mentioned in a, uh, the first chapter of Michael Casey's novel, Michael Casey, uh, the content uh, head of content at Coindesk, wherein they, he uh, explains how she was able to blog for a f film reviews and was able to earn in Bitcoin and using Amazon gift cards that she purchased with Bitcoin, she was able to buy herself a laptop and open an account for herself. So, so indeed, Bitcoin has opened the doors for young women and girls in Afghanistan. Um, just reflecting on on that for a moment, I, you you spoke a bit about it. What what it has done for women and girls in Afghanistan? You mentioned airdrops. Yeah, just um, donations, um, you know, over over to women uh, that, and, and whether it's for a blog post, as as we mentioned, or uh, to help pay for their education or something that they need that their family can't provide. You know, certainly something I can, if I have their wallet address, can send them some Bitcoin um, and, and, you know, $10 worth, whatever it is, at a very low fee. So, um, so it's a way to get donations uh, directly to the individuals. Uh, it's something protocols can certainly do, different companies around the world, um, crypto companies around the world can do. Um, and the, the challenge really is though, you know, once it reaches there, will they be able to access their, their, 
their own crypto. And, and over the past, you know, uh, 10 years, they, they've had more control and more self-sovereignty. Now it's a big question mark with the Taliban. And, and I, I don't think people know exactly what's going to happen. They certainly have said that they're going to be more open-minded. Uh, they're not going to pull women out of school. But will women be able to be out freely? Will they be able to spend their money um, or you know, will that money have to be given over to uh, mm -hmm. to the males and, and their families? And, and, you know, there's many countries around the world where that still happens. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, where, where having a, a Bitcoin wallet uh, can be really useful is, is if you do leave the country too. Uh, refugees, you know, often um, I come from a family, um, uh, a part of uh, which were refugees from Africa, uh, you know, people try to take gold with them or whatever if they have a value with them. Imagine if you, you know, just had your your Bitcoin wallet, your password, your 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 private keys, and you know that you'd be okay, that you would be able to access that money anywhere else, and you didn't have to bring like you know. Uh, physical items. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think this is something we need to keep in mind for the future, and and that uh, you know, Bitcoin is is not only a store of value for the institutions and large companies and corporate treasuries that we've seen over the last year, but but fundamentally can help the uh, kind of help the most uh, people people on the ground who are the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And just pivoting slightly, you know, this is the longest conflict in U.S. history, 20 years of war that the United States have been, has been involved with Afghanistan. Tens of thousands of Afghans have died, 2,500 Americans killed, hundreds of thousands wounded, and $2 trillion down the drain. So there is this idea in the Bitcoin community that the United States has overextended itself as an empire. And we heard from Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk last month talking about states are basically like corporations with a monopoly on war and violence and that a monopoly on money that allows uh, empires to have that power uh, could be diminished with Bitcoin in the sense that it could allow people other alternatives to the dominant reserve currency and then uh, they they suggest it could bring about world peace. I wonder what your thoughts are on that line of thinking. Well, like I, I think that is a very kind of Pollyannish view of of uh, of the world um, that that Bitcoin can bring about world peace. I I, I think there are a lot of human uh, intricacies um, uh, that are going to keep us from from having complete world peace, um, and and that is that just innate desire for power. Um, I have spent a lot of time studying kind of ancient uh, history. Um, you know, looking at the different empires over the years, the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, um, the British Empire. Um, and, and then if you really look at, you know, the last hundred years of American dominance, um, you know, it's, it's not a surprise that we're, we're kind of nearing the end of that. Um, and, and we've seen that happen. I do think uh, a, a self-sovereign currency such as Bitcoin can speed up that process and in terms of, you know, if, if there is no uh, one major economic dependency, one country um, uh, that can wield power economically over others, uh, then that creates a more level playing field. Um, and, and so I, I, I definitely do believe that, um, uh, you know, this, this whole kind of industrial war complex that we've seen over, over the hundreds, probably thousands of years um, uh, is, is not going away, but can be diminished uh, significantly when you start to give individuals on the ground power uh, in the form mm -hmm. of economic currency where they are no longer, you know, dependent on, you know, fighting for the nation state, um, that right. they uh, can see more of a borderless world work. 